So, Kareem, what did you do to the CCNA? Matt, they don't let me touch anything because anything I touch, I break. So I'm not sure what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah, I know there's good reason for our leadership's decisions, and that is definitely a great decision right there is to keep your hands off of as much as possible. Myself as well, by the way. <laughs> but yeah, we did update the CCNA blueprint. And I'm excited to talk to you about it, man. Hello and welcome to the Cisco Learning Network podcast. We're continuing our series, What's the Deal With? Featuring Cisco Learning Network Community Manager Matt Saunders and lead tech advocate Kareem Iskander, discussing what the deal is with different topics in tech and how they relate to Cisco certifications. In this episode, Matt and Kareem get into all the details behind Cisco's decision to add artificial intelligence and machine learning to the list of exam topics for the CCNA certification exam. They dive into the scope of these changes, which, spoiler alert, is very small. However, despite these being very minor changes, Matt and Kareem get into the finer details of what topics are changing, why, and when we can expect these changes to be implemented. So this is our What's the Deal series uh, as a part of the Cisco Learning Network podcast. I'm Matt Saunders, a community manager for the Cisco Learning Network, and I am joined every episode with my friend and colleague, Kareem Iskander. Thanks for having me, Matt. We'll be serious here now. We have recently announced some important updates to the CCNA. There's a few items, but for this particular podcast episode, we'll focus on the item of artificial intelligence and machine learning being added to the exam and the exam topics. Kareem, what's the deal with adding AI to the CCNA? When we look at what's happening in today's world, AI is everywhere. If we hone in specifically on Cisco, Cisco has AI in the network and AI on the network. And CCNA is our entry level certification to you know, your career in network engineering. And so keeping that in mind and putting the two together, it only made sense for us to test those skills and knowledge of the, the new network engineer at an NA level, at an associate level of their knowledge of AI. Things like being able to understand the difference between predictive AI and generative AI. On our previous episode, we chatted about observability and how observability is made possible because we have had predictive AI in our network and in our controllers and trickled throughout Cisco products, right? And so when you are going into just kind of understanding the difference between generative and predictive, we want to be able to leverage generative AI essentially as a sidekick to them when they're troubleshooting or when they're maybe viewing packets and trying to debug issues within the network, all of that could be helpful to them, but at an associate level. And so it just made sense to have it as part of, you know, what we talked about. Take it back about maybe four years ago or five years ago, Matt, when we were talking about network automation, right? You know, we're going to use APIs, we're going to do all these things. And as a network engineer, you need to understand how to automate your network. You know, fast forward a couple of years, we've updated our CCNA to have automation in it. This is kind of similar to that, that kind of same motion where we see a value in generative AI, we see a value in predictive AI, and we want you to test those skills on the CCNA. I think you just nailed it. I think we're um, good to wrap up this episode of what's the deal. No, okay. So um, no, but honestly, that was perfect. Thank you. And so I'm going to take us a uh, half a step back for a moment. Let's say what the exact exam topic update is in, on this topic in domain six. So the subtopic of 6.4 on the exam topics is explain AI and then in parentheses, generative and predictive and machine learning and network operations. So you just did a great job nailing kind of like the why and kind of the what 
exactly we're looking for there for associates. You know, understand what the difference is between what a generative AI is and predictive AI, and then also machine learning. But so I wanna kind of ask you, and specifically, you said we have AI in the network and on the network as well. And I wanna drill in just a little bit about what all that means. So are we looking at this at the CCNA level here from the standpoint of kind of an automation enabler or like a general network operations management tool set or from that big picture of like infrastructure support and supporting AI intensive infrastructure environments. Can you kind of, you know, parse that out for us a bit? It's definitely not about AI and automation. This is not the intention of having this topic in the blueprint. So I'll give the example. Cisco announced a sidekick in their security suite in XDR, right? Where you have AI embedded, you can go in and ask it questions, apply firewall rules via chatting with that sidekick, which is an AI underneath right? Generative AI specifically. As somebody that's, you know, looking to leverage something like this, if we peel back the onion a little bit, what do you need from a skill set? What is it that you need to understand? Well, you need to understand that, first of all, that this is generative AI, right? Which is what we've seen with open AI and chat GPT out there, right? But you also need to understand not only the technical part of it, but the art of prompt engineering itself. You need to ask it the right questions, in order to receive the right output from that AI. It's not a human. As much as we make it seem like this is like the best thing that we have, it's not a human, right? And so Gen AI or the psychic is as good as the prompts you give it. And so you need to understand how to do that. This is where we are tying it into AI in Cisco. And then for sure, what you mentioned about from an infrastructure perspective is, which is AI workloads on Cisco. At an NA level, you got to have a basic understanding of how intensive and how these AI workloads work. At some point throughout your career, as you go from the NA to the NP to the IE level, right? You need to be able to design your network and troubleshoot your network and make it as efficient as possible because these AI workloads are pretty intensive, right? And so we are preparing you for that kind of next level of network engineering, designing networks for the AI workload. That's perfect. Thank you. That helps clarify a couple of things in my mind. And in particular, you know, I think the key point of like, we're not handing over the keys to the network to an AI bot to automate the management of the network. No, we're not. But to your point, it's more like, I might be able to ask a bot-like interface, you know, are all of the devices in my network up to date on their, you know, the latest patches? Is that kind of a, a use case that you envision? I mean, that's a use case that you can leverage automation to build it yourself, right? Which means understanding how generative AI works, how to train your LLM. What is RAG, for instance, right? Just in case you don't know, an LLM stands for Large Language Model, which are deep learning algorithms that can recognize, summarize, translate, predict, and generate content using very large data sets that you train the model on. And Retrieval Augmented Generation, or RAG, is a technique for enhancing the accuracy and reliability of generative AI models by using facts fetched from external sources. These basic knowledge of generative AI, the building blocks of a gen AI, to be able to leverage the network APIs in order for you to chat with that psychic to say, hey, can you go out and check switch one against switch two? I want to see where the configuration drift is happening. Right. And you should be able to do that using the network APIs, maybe with some Ansible in there and open AI kind of APIs. But also some of the Cisco products out there today come built in. It's like you don't have to build this. Our firewalls, right? They have the ability to be able to we saw that G2 just announced it and we saw it a couple months ago where I can go in and say, tell me what firewalls or ACL rules I have out there today configured. And then being able to chat with your sidekick to give you that is a huge thing because firewall rules are massive and they're very convoluted. So being able to understand how to chat with that bot is also something that at an NA level you should be understand because it's an art in itself. Right, exactly. The 
prompt engineering is somewhat of a popular or common term right now, but is accurate. The prompt engineering to be able to, you know, essentially ask your network, ask your devices the right questions to be able to kind of just query and get the feedback against that prompt. For predictive AI, you mentioned that's more along the lines of like the HyperShield announcements that G2 had recently announced or? There are a couple of things, right? So the predictive AI is kind of the machine learning part of this where I think we mentioned from an observability perspective, we talked a little bit about it on our last episode, but from a predictive AI perspective is you have all this data coming out of your network. You have machine learning sitting in the different controllers, whether that's Catalyst Center or maybe XDR itself collecting data from your entire security setup. Predictive AI allows you to aggregate that data and make some intelligent decisions. From the learner's perspective or from the network engineer's perspective, there's not much for them to do there because these models are already kind of trained. You are just a user of them, where by user, I mean you reap the benefit of it, which is you have the ability to predict. Thousand Eyes have noticed that based on their predictive AI, that you might be hitting a slowdown in your application because of these issues that we're seeing. And so you can actually go pinpoint that and fix it today before your application takes a hit. And this is where predictive comes in play from that perspective. Now, the hyper shield itself is somewhat predictive, but this is at a kernel level. And we're going to get super geeky here, Matt, but I'm going to try not to. It's basically having some type of protocol sitting at your kernel, which is very low level to be able to predict any attacks that happens on your network prior to it becoming a huge issue. And so there's a lot more to it, but I try to kind of keep it as simple as possible using eBPF and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, we have to keep in mind and remind ourselves this is a uh, CCNA level focused right. <laughs> topic episode. So yeah, I, I know what you mean. Honestly, I wish that you know we were doing a video podcast here in a sense today because I've been nodding along the whole time as you've been explaining that. So that's really helped to clarify some of the big differences between the generative AI and the predictive AI that we've been talking about. Did you just admit that you agree with me all the time? The uh, I've got a little audio problem here on my end. I'll take that um, as a yes. We'll see, I'm not sure what we, was going on there, but we'll just keep moving forward. Um, <laughs> let's talk for a moment about machine learning at this level as well. What should folks be looking at specifically from a machine learning standpoint for this topic within the CCNA? Just knowing the correlation of machine learning to predictive AI because we're not going to ask you questions on how do you train the models. Like this is not the intention of this task in the blueprint. But knowing that when we talk about predictive AI, we're talking about some model, the machine learning and learned from data and the data that we have in our network, and we can do something with it. Right. And again, it's at a NA very high level. Perfect. That nails it. Let's talk for a moment about the scope within the large picture of the exam and the you know the number of exam questions that folks might get, et cetera. You know, the scope of this update, how significant from an exam topics standpoint, because you know, I think it's pretty clear, like the idea of introducing the concepts of AI into Cisco certification exams at any level is a big idea. Like that's a big deal, like, oh, okay. But for the scope of this particular exam, what's your advice for folks to keep in mind as they're looking into, leaning into this particular topic area? It's very minor and it shows with the minor versioning that we have. It's 1.1, not 2.0. And so I wouldn't worry too much about it. If you're listening to this and you have been working towards getting your CCNA, whether that's before the cutoff date or after the cutoff date, I wouldn't stress about it. This is us saying the CCNA is relevant in the market. The CCNA is still a bridge to really well-paid positions out there. We are testing your knowledge on some of the topics that are hot in the market that you should know. And so just continue your learning, follow the resources that you've been following, whether they've been updated with the blueprint or not. I don't suspect based on just the percentage and how minor of a change it is, I don't suspect there's going to be a lot of questions on the exam about it. 
a few at most. They're pretty common sense if you understand the differences between Gen AI and predictive AI from a network operation perspective, you're golden. I really thought you were going to say, if you're listening to this episode now, stop. <laughs> <laughs> because it's so minor not to worry about it too much. And I was a little worried. I was, wait, no, don't stop listening. Hang with us. <laughs> no, but that's perfect. You're exactly right. It's less than 10% of the exam at this point. Do you think it's fair to also say like, maybe it's a bit of an indicator as to you're at the associate level. We want you to start to understand this. Now, as folks start to get ready to move up into MP and IE over the next few years, yeah. you know, it's going to become more and more important, just like automation did from however many years back up to where it's at now. Fair to say, you think? Yeah, it's my turn to nod my head now. Yeah. If, if we had a, a video yeah. on it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, absolutely, man. You're absolutely right. So, once again, you're agreeing with everything that I say. I always agree. I have no issues admitting <laughs> that I agree with you all the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the only other bits that I want to kind of talk about with you while I have you here today, you know, there's other updates in this version 1.1 and uh, release announcement. I don't think we need to necessarily get into all of them too much because, you know, there's a bit in here that kind of covers like spanning tree, you know, network device management, etc. There is a mention in 2.8 around described network device management that I'm curious if you could touch on. And that's where it says, and cloud managed now. The updated task 2.8 now reads, describe network device management access like Telnet, SSH, HTTP, HTTPS, console, TACX plus, radius and cloud managed. Right, it makes sense. It's not new, right? If you look at, again, from a network engineering perspective and what Cisco and what we've been doing, a lot of things that are out there are now cloud managed, right? Recently, if you're a Meraki fan as myself, you'll see that the Cisco Catalyst switches or the Catalyst suite in general can now be cloud managed part of the Meraki dashboard. We want you to be able to understand the difference between things like cloud managed versus on-prem and that's where this is going and this is where it starts and stops right where at the end of the day they are pretty much the same right but there are some abstraction in some of the operations and some of the configuration and how you configure these devices and so describe which is basically we're not asking you to do anything you just want to be able to say oh yeah if i'm seeing maybe this device in a meraki dashboard the cat k showed up in the meraki dashboard that's considered cloud managed that's a described kind of question Crystal clear. Thank you. Thank you. Two more. 6.5. 6.5 now reads, describe characteristics of REST-based APIs and in parentheses, authentication types, CRUD, HTTP verbs, and data encoding. Yeah, this is something that actually was my feedback on the blueprint here. I guess after all, they allowed me to touch it. One of the things from a network engineering perspective going into automation, where actually I've seen that when we're talking to network engineers and we're maybe delivering sessions or lab sessions specifically, folks struggle with that first step into API call. And the majority of the time, the reason why this happens is because they've missed authentication or authorization. So I wanted to make sure as part of this task in the blueprint, we actually specifically call out that, hey, go learn about authorization and authentication because it's more of a clarifying point, not an addition, because if you look at version one, it called for everything, the CRUD with APIs and HTTP verbs and data encoding, but it never actually called for authentication, but it's kind of inherently given because if you're gonna do any CRUD with an API, you got to authenticate if you're going to post, if you're going to put, if you're going to get against any modern day API, you're going to have to know how to authenticate. And so that's why I wanted to make sure we call it out. First of all, to clarify while you're studying that you should know this. And second of all, you should know this as part of your journey and your career. 
I love how that really speaks to the idea of continuous maintenance on these exam topics. And the whole point of minor version updates and releases is to really focus in on doing exactly that kind of work where we see some things are frequently being missed by the candidates and we feel that we need to be sure to clarify that. And actually our good friend Wendell Odom will in particularly really appreciate that level of detail added. We were just talking recently about how much fun he has decoding and sorting through through the exam topics to write the books from the Cisco Press study guides. So I have a feeling he'll particularly appreciate that level of detail. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then the last one that I want to touch on 6.6. .6. The reduction of Puppet and Chef, and the addition of Terraform. 6.6 .6 now reads, recognize the capabilities of configuration management mechanisms such as Ansible and Terraform. Why Terraform and what should they know? So I think it goes back to your comment around how we maintain our CCNA and how we keep it relevant to the market. When we started the whole DevNet thing with automation and Cisco, what was being utilized with Cisco and the Cisco APIs at the time were like Python, Ansible, Puppet Chef. Terraform was in the picture, but it was in the picture for some products, but it wasn't in the picture as it is in the picture. Technology evolves, right? And we see that every day. Case in point, AI. With the evolution of automation and Cisco APIs, there has been a massive adoption to Terraform, Ansible, and not so much Puppet and Chef. And so, again, this is keeping the learner and the cert holder relevant to the market and saying, yeah, if you are out there on the job automating with Cisco APIs, or automating with any APIs, really, even in cloud relevancy, right? You're going to need to understand what a Terraform provider is. You're going to need to understand the basic skeleton of a Terraform plan, right? These are the basics and a level that you should understand. And you should know the difference between when to use Ansible and when to use Terraform, right? What are the differences? And when should you make a decision to use Ansible versus when should you adopt Terraform in your automation project? And then there's also the part of keeping in mind what's in the next levels of these certifications, right? And so we look at what's going to happen in the CCNP and what's going to happen in the CCIE. In the CCNP and the CCIE, whichever route you choose to take, we're not going to be touching Chef and Puppet, right? But you are going to be building configuration in Ansible and building configuration in Terraform. This is part of, if we look at the DevNet expert blueprint, right? Do this in Ansible, do this in Terraform. And so we're prepping you for that as well. And so there's a couple of reasons as to why we have made the decision to bring in Terraform. And I think we've also changed that in the Dev Associate. So it only seems fair for not testing on Chef and Puppet in the actual automation certification that we provide. And we should probably change it in the CCNA. Perfect. I think that is your mic drop moment. No, but seriously, <laughs> you explained that perfectly from my perspective. So thank you. A couple last pointers that I want to just remind folks about before we wrap up, give you an opportunity to remind folks about anything as well, or, you know, highlight anything specifically. The scope of all of these updates we've discussed here today within the larger CCNA exam are definitely considered minor. So again, if you're studying today, keep going from where you're at. If your plan is to take the exam after August 19th of 2024, so effective August 20th, 2024, then look at adding these new topics to your learning as you proceed over the next couple of months from whenever the date of this episode releases until those dates. So keep going. Just add these new items in there download or review these exam topics at the Cisco Learning Network under the CCNA exam section of the Cisco Learning Network or on the roadmaps page on the Cisco Learning Network as well. You'll see the full overview of everything. And then from there, Kareem, one of the things I always compliment you and the team on is the resources, your team, but also the full Cisco U team are always working diligently on and putting together inside of that platform, both for free access level, as well as essentials and all access levels. Any particular resources that you want to highlight within Cisco U and point folks towards for these topics? 
Yeah, for sure, Matt. Thank you. Head over to you.cisco.com. I worked with my team on to make sure that we have at least some free resources to guide you through the new blueprint updates. So we don't have everything there. What we have is we have a set of tutorials available. You know, all of our tutorials are free of charge with your basic membership of free membership, I should say, with of Cisco U. Check out the AI related tutorials you can just go on the top right corner and search for ai and you'll see a, a set of close to 10 tutorials that will cover pretty much everything that you need to know for that blueprint task that we've updated the other thing is terraform so if you want to learn a little bit more about terraform and get hands-on Quinn Snyder has a great set of tutorials to get you started with Terraform, and that would be good for your you know, preparation for your CCNA exam. And so you'll see this a lot from us with Blueprint Updates. We'll release some tutorials to help our learners better prepared for the new update, whether it's CCNA, Dev Associate, whatever it is that we're updating next. That's our goal. The other thing is I'd like to actually know from our listeners, what should we cover? What episodes should we do around what's the deal with? Is there a topic in mind that you want us to talk about? I think we could do that, right, Matt? Maybe they can post in the forums about it. Absolutely. We'll be creating a post about this episode in the Learning Network Community Forums. So yes, we love to get the feedback in the comments on that forum post, on those forum postings. And the comments about how great I do on here and some of the work that you need, Kareem, on your end are, are helpful. No, I'm just kidding. But uh in particular, to your point, Cream, topics, let us know what you want covered and we'll do it. We'll tackle it. Absolutely. I should also mention, by the way, a couple of other forum resources that a couple of our friends and community VIPs, Cisco VIPs have authored for us in the CCNA certification forum to drill into some of these AI based topics as well. So Wendell Odom has a great community forum post in there. Our friend Stuart Clark, who's a Cisco VIP now, has a great forum post, a couple of great forum posts in that CCNA forum, as well as my colleague and friend, community manager, Carlo Bobilas, has also authored a very nice overview post in there to drill into these things as well. And we'll, we'll cross link all of the resources that Kareem mentioned and some of those forum postings I mentioned as well when we post this episode into the Learning Network forum. Sweet. Kareem, I think that's the deal with AI in the CCNA. I hope folks do keep the conversation going with us on all of these topics and let us know what other topics they want to hear. And Kareem, thank you again for making time to join us today. Yeah, Matt, this is always fun. Thank you. Cool. We'll wrap up. Thank you, everybody. Keep learning and good luck on your CCNA exam. That's it for our third episode of What's the Deal With, featuring community manager Matt Saunders and lead tech advocate Kareem Miskander. If you'd like to learn more about the AI updates to the CCNA exam topics list and about how AI pertains to network operations, please visit the Cisco Learning Network at learningnetwork.cisco.com. There, you can find all kinds of resources like study guides, training videos, exam topics, and an entire community that can help you in your learning journey. And please subscribe to the Cisco Learning Network podcast to hear more news about Cisco's certification portfolio and stories from others who are on their certification paths. Thanks for listening. Cool.